this is problem uh, 7.4. And here we have a cantilever beam, that we have a beam AB that is attached at A by a fixed support. Fixed support, right? And then we have a force that is applied to the beam that is a distributive force. In this case, we like to find the internal reactions at point C. I have always solved the problems that we need to find the external reactions first. However, in this case, if you see that I go directly and make this cut, over here, and I draw the feed body diagram of the right side of my beam, those external reactions will not appear. So in this particular case, where I do not have any external reaction in one side of my beam, the only thing that I want to find is the internal reactions, then I can skip, so to say, that step. So I will skip the step of finding the external reaction because when I am drawing the free body diagram, those forces do not appear. So my free body diagram of my cut for the internal reactions in order to be able to skip that step of finding the external reaction, I will do it from the right side. So I will draw my little piece of beam, which is from B to C. In this case, I have the distributed force will be this little piece of distributed force from here to here, right? So I need to find what will be the concentrated load for that little piece of distributed load. And in order to do that, I need to find this height of the distributed force. So I will use a similar triangles or relations, right? So this is a 1,200 newtons over meters. This is three meters. And this height over here is located at 1.5 meters. So as you know, H over 1.5 will be equal to 1,200 over 3. Therefore, H is 1,200 times 1.5 over 3, which leads me to that H is equal to 600 newtons over meters. So now I have that in my free body diagram, I have 1.5, and I have, this is 600, right? I already found it. So I can say that this piece over here that I want to draw as a concentrated load will be the area on the dark curve would be this area over here. And this area over here, or that load will be the H, which I just found, 600 times 1.5 divided by 2. And that's equals to 450 newtons. So I will write my force over here, 450, right? Uh, and it will be located at 0 0.5 meters from my point that I'm cutting, which is cut C. So this is B, and this is C, and this is B. And I don't have any other external force. Of course, I have my internal force. Let me draw my C over here so that I have a space to draw my internal forces. So which ones are my internal forces? If I draw the right side, I have to always be careful with the convention side. Sign. So I draw my normal force in this direction, right? I draw my shear force in this direction and I draw my moment in this direction. Please go back to the sign convention. This is the convention for the normal force. This is the convention for the shear force. And this is the convention for the bending moment. So those are, this is my uh, free body diagram of the cut 
where I have only one external force and my three internal forces. Now I have that, I can apply my equations of equilibrium and I find that adding forces in x equals to zero, therefore I have negative n, n equals zero, right? Therefore n is equals to zero. I remember that I'm using x, y as my inertial coordinate system where this is positive for my moment, right? So I add forces in y and I get v minus 450 equals to zero, therefore v is equals positive 450 newtons. And then I take moment respect to any point of the beam. I'm going to take moment at C, and I get that negative M, right? Negative 0 0.5 times 450 is equals to zero. Therefore, my moment is equals to negative 20, uh, 225 newtons. So those are my three results. So I do not have any uh, normal force. I have a positive shear force, and I have a negative moment. So having a negative moment means that at this point particularly, my beam is concave down. So, oh, and that makes sense because I am applying a force uh, to a cantilever beam which is fixed at A downwards. So my beam will deform in this, will take this shape.